Hello, welcome to Luna Midnight Designs. For my 100th doll, I will be turning these doll parts into Cerberus, the guardian doll of the underworld. This is going to be interesting. I'm taking a lot of inspiration from Delightful's werewolf doll she made for Halloween. Mine is definitely not going to be as good. So let's get started. So to begin, I need to take this doll apart even more. So I'm cutting the legs apart to steal the joints. I want to make extra joints for the legs, kind of like Delightful's werewolf, but I'm not doing it like she did, so I'm kind of hoping my way works. And because I'm making a Cerberus doll, I need to add another neck. So there's another Cloudy Wolf doll out there who has been torn apart. Rest in peace. So to strengthen the hold for the torso, I'm using this metal bar and two-part epoxy glue. And later, once the glue is dry, I add epoxy clay to further strengthen the hold. It doesn't have to be pretty since it's going to be covered up. Now to attach the lower half of the body, I use the same metal bar and even more glue and clay. For the legs, I use wire to put the pieces together and glue. I then use clay to fill in the gap. I then attach the rest of the body with even more wire, more glue, and more clay. At this point, it's mostly wire and glue and clay for this doll. No more plastic. I then use more clay to thicken the legs and the thighs, just so when I attach the fur later, the legs aren't skinny. I then give this monster huge feet out of clay and claws too. So as you can see and probably tell, I'm just kind of guessing and trying to make this doll work. Once all the clay is dry, I paint the legs black and the torso and arms brown. Time to pickle some heads! I mean, time to shrink some heads? I always do the 100% acetone method. It is a lot faster, like a 2 hour soak and like a 24 hour dry. So I want to give the two side heads like extreme crazy facial expressions. So first, I have to remove their curved faces. Just kidding, just the lips. Once that is done, I use clay to give them new mouths. One that is open with a smile, and the other one has their tongue sticking out. Once the clay is dry, I paint their faces brown to hide the clay better. I know they look bad now, but it does get better, trust me. For the middle head, I want a calm and stern look. Cause I mean, it has to put up with the two crazy ones. To start the face up, I paint a darker brown around the face to show where the hair will be going later. And like all the other 100 face-ups I've done, I start with blushing. I blush the eyes, the cheeks, the lips, and the nose. I then draw in the eyes, adding color to the lips and around the eyes. I then add bushy eyebrows and long lashes, and of course, use magic to copy and paste the other half of the face. To add more pigment to color to the face, I use paint. And with that, the first face up is done. 
Now comes the other two. Very similar steps and style, but very different expressions. This time I don't use pencils because it might chip the paint, so I go straight in with the paint. Now, I have made so many dolls, a hundred dolls, it's crazy. I made so many more before YouTube, but it's nice looking back and seeing how much my style and craft has evolved and changed. How I used to hate sewing and would glue everything to now, like hand sewing these crazy and elaborate outfits. I'm just very grateful to the other doll artists who inspired me to start this journey. It has been so much fun. Now to hide the imperfections for one of the facial removals, I added a scar to one of the faces and then I also added a scar to the other one just so they kind of match a little bit better. I mean the rest of their body is covered in fur, so it's the only place they can have scars really. Now time to turn this yarn into hair and fur. I start with cutting the yarn and then I tie a few strands together. I then brush out the yarn to make wefts.
and I had to make so so many wefts you guys have no idea I ran out of the brown yarn and I almost ran out of the black but I made it work to attach the brushed yarn to the face I just add glue I don't know why I did it I just felt like it was a good idea I do this to all three heads, and then I cut and shape the hair. After that, I add hair to the rest of the head. Putting the middle head back on was not easy. It was a struggle, but I did it. I made it through. I survived. I then just glue the remaining wefts to the rest of the body, turning this doll into one big fur ball. Along the way, I do cut the hair so it isn't too long or too bushy. And with that, the doll is done. So after attaching all the hair to the body, I felt 
unhappy. So off camera, I made a few changes. I hope you like what I did. And here is the final doll, Cerberus, the guardian of the gates of the underworld. They guard the gates of the underworld, allowing the dead and some of the living to pass, but once in, they can never leave. They are a monster born to devour. They love causing chaos and scaring the souls who pass through the gates. I'm really happy with how the faces turned out and also the hair on the heads, but I'm not as in love with how the body turned out. But I did my best to make a monster, and it kind of is. Anyway, thank you all for joining me today. I know a few of you are really looking forward to a Cerberus doll, so I hope I haven't left you disappointed. Follow me on Instagram to see more, and to be more a part of my process, check out my community page for polls on doll ideas and sneak peeks of upcoming videos. And subscribe to catch future videos. Thank you all for the love and support. Have a creative day. See you soon. Bye!